Hi, welcome to Travel Tuesdays with Teresa. And this week's episode, we have Stacy Moss, who is a yacht charter broker for Campers and Nicholson, and she's based in Florida, in West Palm Beach, Florida. Welcome, Stacy. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So yacht chartering is not for everyone. It's a very niched business. And I just want to ask you a couple of personal questions to kind of get to know who you are and of course. what intrigued you. How did you get into the yacht charter business? Well, it's kind of a long journey. Um, I was in the professional world and I will keep this short. I was in the professional world and sales, advertising sales for many years. And um, I moved to Florida and I woke up one day and thought, I'm going to be here the rest of my life. This is my only chance. I was in my early 30s, which is kind of late to do that. Um, so in this like living in Fort Lauderdale, which is the yachting capital, um, I decided to put my house up for rent and I went to work on board as a chief stewardess on the yacht. So I traveled all over the world doing that. Um, I did that for four years and then I came back and I became a private estate manager. So I basically worked for the same high net worth individuals, uh, managing their estates and their yachts and their staff and that type of thing. Um, when my daughter was young, I decided to go back into yachting. So I started off in yacht management and then I morphed into charter management. So I used to represent the owner. So I managed a fleet of yachts and did the marketing um, and worked with the charter brokers. And about six years ago, I decided, well, I might as well do what I haven't done. And I became a charter broker. So it's been really great. And because of my experience, all of that has come in extremely helpful, especially working on board and then managing the yachts and that type of thing too. So that's that's, awesome. That's about it. (laughs) So how many years have you been chartering yachts? Um, I have been the last 11 years um, in management and as a retail charter broker, the last six. Wow. Yes. I know I've come to you um, to to hire um, yacht charters for my clients and we've built a friendship we have even though you live in Florida and I'm in Virginia you have a little bit of a Virginia background you're from yes. Richmond and I live yes. in Northern Virginia so yeah. we've got that connection but uh, you your company has done well by my clients I must say so anyway I am gonna share my screen because I have lots of photos of that I want to showcase on some of the yacht charters that we've got going on. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna start with Cartouche, which is a catamaran. She is, she is, and she has a very, very busy active charter program. Um, One of the nice features about the catamarans, um, all the times in the Caribbean, and mostly when they charter in the Mediterranean, they're not all inclusive, but in the Caribbean and the BVIs and the USBIs, the catamarans are typically all inclusive, which is great because all of your expenses are included, your food, um, your beverages. Um, if you want something really high end, let's say champagne or something like that. But but you'd be surprised what they do include, which is usually a pretty, pretty good um, variety of drinks and food. Um, and she's a beautiful boat and she spends the winters in the Caribbean and the summer she's over in Greece. And she's a beautiful boat. Wow. And just to give you an idea, she's a more a little bit of a more pricier catamaran, but you can see why. Um, her rate's around fifty-five thousand dollars per week, all inclusive. How many bedrooms does she have? I believe she has four. And that includes a crude yacht and uh um... includes everything, crew, food, beverages, everything. Um taxes or port fees might be a little bit extra or anything special you want to do or excursions. Um, A lot of these boats also offer scuba diving, which some of the motor yachts don't. It's typically third party done by someone else, but she's a stunning example of a really lovely catamaran. She is very modern. I'll give you that. Her crew is also very water sports inclined. I think they do kite surfing and they do all kinds of things and they also dive off the boat, but she's a beauty for sure. So now we're going to go over to Santouche, or is it Santosh? It's Santouche, Santouche. even though it looks like Santosh. 
<laughs> okay. Let me so, say a little bit about this boat. Yeah, she she is new to the charter market. Um, she is a very big volume boat for if you just scroll up a little bit to see the spec, just a little bit. Um, she's 108 feet, but she sleeps 10 guests, which is really good for a boat of that size. She's really beautiful. She has a beautiful interior. I have been on board. Um, I've seen her a couple of times. Um, she's very beamy, so she's very wide. Uh, she's a great charter boat, and she's available in the summer in the Bahamas, in Florida, and the winter in the Caribbean in the Bahamas. Wow. And she was built in 2020. Yeah, she's new, and she's new to charter. She was private for the first two years, meaning just the owner's use. And now she's a really successful, has a successful charter program, but she's really lovely. And where is she based out of? Miami. Miami. And you can sail her all year round throughout the Caribbean or? Uh, like winter's in the Caribbean and summer in the Bahamas. So some of the charter locations are seasonal. So for example, the Caribbean is only in the winter. The boats kind of leave after the winter, uh, usually after Easter. And they either head back over to um, Europe, to the West Med, or they go to their other destinations or to the okay. yard first to have work done. Look at that. She's got a beautiful little cinema, drop down cinema outside too. Yeah, that's beautiful. So if somebody yeah. wanted to rent a yacht charter, like motor or a cat in the summertime in the Caribbean, that might be a little challenging because a lot of them in are the in the lower Caribbean. And one of the reasons is, is that the insurance companies don't like to insure boats in the Caribbean, the lower Caribbean in the summer because of hurricane season. So okay. Yes. Are, are we talking lower Caribbean, like St. Lucia, Grenada, or are we yes. talking and St. Martin, St. Bart's? The only time you'll see um, the USBIs and the BBIs, well, the catamarans charter their year round. But a lot of the motor yachts clear out of the Caribbean in general. And that would be from um, the U.S. Virgin Islands all the way down through Grenada because of the hurricane season. Now, but the catamarans stay put. <laughs> okay. So who would be the typical yacht charter customer? Who would consider this over a land vacation? Anyone. You know, we get, I get to have clients that are from, from families, families to couples to, I've done, um, I did a wedding on a boat, a motor yacht, a couple, right before COVID, we had a wedding on a motor yacht in St. Thomas. And then the couple went off on their honeymoon to the BVIs just by themselves for a week. But we see bachelors, we see girls trips. I mean, it just, we get a little bit of everything. Can you do some, so single girls trips, single yes. guys trips, things yes. like that, yes. as well as multi-gen. Like I just had a client that um, retired and he took his um, family on vacation Yes. to celebrate and I, his retirement. Yes. And I can tell you that Alaska is a very popular charter location in the summer. I've done several multi-generational trips there because there's so much to see in the wildlife and everything too. Alaska is a really great destination for multi-generational. So is the Caribbean. Um, the thing about Alaska though, there's not a tremendous amount of boats that are there. So those boats book up pretty quickly. So those book up pretty far in advance, which is in general... Um, back to catamarans, those boats book up really far in advance, especially for the holidays. So anyone who's looking to book something for Christmas and New Year, it's got to do it um, oh. almost a year in advance. You know, you and I just had our one, your wonderful client who was on board. Um, they booked theirs really far in advance, even though it's not as busy <laughs> they <booked laughs> this time it of year. The month of March in the Caribbean. Yes. And they booked it almost two years in advance, about a yes. year in eight months, a year and nine months in advance. And they booked it during 2020 or 2021 for sailing March of 2023. I think it was 2021. Yeah. And uh, I was quite impressed. It turned out to be a lovely family to work with. But anyway, what are your most popular destinations for yacht, yacht chartering? So one of the most popular is the Bahamas. And one of the reasons why is because it's a year round destination. <clears throat> so they're, they're just not seasonal. Um, back to COVID, when COVID happened, the Bahamas were locked down for an initial like maybe 30 days. But after that, they were the only location that was consistently able to charter, you know, throughout the recover of, um, of COVID. So that's a really popular destination. 
Um, the Caribbean is very popular in the winter months through through uh, April, usually, you know, Easter time, Passover time. And then those are really the popular locations. A little bit of Mexico, but not too much. Um, and I'm talking winter now. Also, um, French Polynesia is also popular as well. Um, and then you move on to summer, the West Med, um, France, Italy, Spain, and Croatia and Greece is a very, very active or very active charter destinations. They're better priced, I think, than the West Med. And the West Med has gotten really crazy during July and August. So I would also recommend the low season of May and September into October, especially in Italy, because yeah. the crowds are gone, the rates are lower, and it's a really good time to do a yacht charter there. And if too. anyone's considering going to Croatia, the best way to see Croatia is by boat, not by land. Yes. You know, so no, Croatia's I, really I agree. Popular. And I was very fortunate to do a trip um, from Split and we sailed on, on the big motor sailors to Dubrovnik and it was really magical and it was truly amazing. Wow. It's really That's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. So when is yacht, yacht charter season? Is there a specific season or is it year round depending on where on planet Earth you want to Well, it just charter? depends. I mean, you know, Bahamas is year round. Um, Bahamas is definitely year round. And then a lot of the boats go to the Caribbean for the holidays. They might come up to the Bahamas for some time, some springtime. And then they either go into the yard to get maintenance work done and get ready for the summer season. And then they might go up to New England in the U.S. That's a popular destination as well. In the U.S., it would be Alaska or New England in the summer or over to the Mediterranean or the East Mediterranean. Um, Greece is also a very popular charter destination. And there's a lot of boats that just charter in the summer in Greece. And I actually will be going to see those boats in May. So I travel to go look at the inventory um, so I can see the boats that are available over there as well. That's amazing. So um, is there a specific um, um, popular occasion that somebody would rent a charter like for a birthday or like you said, a destination wedding? Um, can someone get legally married if they're on international water? Uh, we did. Ours, ours was in the, this one I did was in the USBIs. Okay, so U.S. Is there a specific popular kind of season to rent yacht charter or is it just whenever, year round? It's year round and depending on where you're going to go would be the time when the boat might be in a specific location. And how much does it cost to charter a yacht? Now, I've got driftwood up right now, which is, <laughs> um, that's quite, I mean, she was built in 2017, holds 12 guests. And I'm just going to kind of go through the... the yes, guys. one of my favorite boats. Um, the last couple of years, uh, so the owner is the GoPro founder. Very oh, extreme really? sports guy. If you look at the pictures, um, they are extreme sports. All the crew members are certified in kite surfing or surfing or scuba. Um, the owner spends a lot of time, has spent a lot of time in Panama and Costa Rica. They're actually taking the boat over to New Zealand and Australia um soon and they'll probably be over there for a while french polynesia but yeah she's a really stunning boat i've been on board look at look her at selection that. of all that stuff she's beautiful zen buddha really lovely yeah you can tell look at <laughs> you can even tell these photos are like gopro photos i mean she's got it who all who would have known so basically, if somebody is watching this and they're wondering if they can afford a yacht charter, what is the typical price for a yacht charter? So for, for people who have like, you know, have a certain budget and they looking not to spend, like depending on, you know, love, I want, it's not low budget, but a lower budget. The catamarans are definitely the way to go. They're all inclusive. So you know exactly what your costs are going to be up front. Um, you can do, you can get a catamaran starting at 40, 45 feet, all inclusive, $20,000 and up, I would say. What I mean, season? Some, would that be Christmas season or would that, that be? That would be any time, but the holidays. And usually there's like a five or 10% premium just for the holiday weeks of Christmas and New Year. Yeah. We call that festive season. That's new yes, we do too. <laughs> festive season. A lot. When I talk to my clients and I'm like, you know, you do you want to go during festive? And they're like, what's festive? And it's 
Christmas and New Year's festive yeah. season. It's the most yeah. expensive time of the year to travel. It and is. you have to book a year, year and a half, some, some, in some cases, two years in advance. But there's a surcharge and usually a minimum during festive. But if you're not traveling during festive, then um, regular pricing, I would imagine. Yes. And that's why St. Bart's and you know, that area is, as you've seen, is really super busy. I mean, there's hundreds of yachts in the harbor there on, Christmas, on New yeah, Year's that, Eve. That looks like a GoPro photo right there. Yeah. Now, when you say uh, the catamarans are all inclusive, what about motor yachts? Are they? So motor yachts typically, no, they're not all inclusive. So it's everything is based on the charter fee. So the charter fee, let's say if you're paying $100,000 for a yacht for the week, that includes the boat and the crew. Everything else is plus plus. So how so we fuel? usually calculate, no, nothing's included. What we do is we take the charter fee and we calculate a percentage of the charter fee for provisioning. <clears throat> and it's called the advanced provisioning allowance. And that allowance will cover any costs associated with the charter, including fuel, um, food, beverages, alcohol, shore excursions, dockage, any, any costs that are associated with the charter will be taken out of the provisioning. So you've got the charter fee of $100,000. We're seeing the APAs now up to 35%, um, 40% in the Bahamas because the cost of everything has increased so much, yeah. especially fuel. And provisioning has become very challenging in the Bahamas because of where they are. So a lot of people will fly things in or they'll be over here in Florida and they can try and provision at least for some of what they need before they come over to the Bahamas. But the, the provisioning is running about 35% in other locations. So, so catamarans is not only a, a more economical option, but it's fully inclusive of fuel and provisions, correct? Yes. Beverages, just about anything. Um, there's a lot of the catamarans offer scuba and they will say, okay, the, you know, the, the charter fee also includes up to two, three dives per person a day or something like that too. So that's a really good value. A lot of the motor yachts don't do the scuba for insurance purposes off the boat, but they'll like bring someone on and it's paid for, I mean, it's extra, you know, it's called third, it's called rendezvous diving where you do it through a third party. Wow. And these look at these, this boat. I know. <laughs> I mean, this is amazing, but you know, this is what, $200,000? No, it's a bit more than that. <laughs> of course. She's around <laughs> 325 a week. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Um, so once someone makes a decision that they found the perfect yacht charter, whether it be catamaran, motor yacht, sail, once they've decided on the yacht, uh, take us through the steps of chartering the yacht. What okay. a contract, what's involved? Yes. Here? So once we so once we decide on the boat and I work with the with the charter manager who represents the owner and the yacht, then we get the paperwork together. There's a contract. I, I draft the contract, we get it approved. Um, and then I once that's approved, I generate the contract and an invoice and wire details. We send that to the client. The client signs the contract first, then the owner. Usually it's about a week process between when you receive the contract to sign it and get the owner to sign and send your deposit in. So how the payment works is um, when you sign the contract, 50% of the charter fee is due as a deposit on the charter. And then 30-ish days prior to the charter starting, you will send the other half of the charter fee along with the provisioning and any other taxes. Um, Bahamas has a lot of taxes. Caribbean charters do not, and neither do the BBIs. So again, that can run you anywhere from 14 to 22% of the charter fee, depending on where, where you're going to be chartering for right. taxes or VAT. So, and you work with travel advisors. So most- yes most clients will reach out to a travel advisor to figure out which boat or yacht charter, whether it be a sailboat, a catamaran, or a motor yacht. And then we 
the travel advisor would work directly with you. And yes. then at some point, once that agreement is signed, we all synergize together and we do conference calls. And we well, we do. And it's important to know that the contract is between the charter client and the owner, and I'm on the contract. So I facilitate all of that happening. And then um, if the charter is like less than 30 days, then all the money would be due up front. You know, and then we would do that. But it's really important to note too that once the final payments end, we have really specific provisioning forms. And these are used for the clients to put down all of their food allergies and restrictions. It's very specific on what time do you want breakfast? What do you like for breakfast? And we use these because we don't want the boat to over provision and spend more money than they need to. And so I use these also still for the catamaran inclusive, but it's really for the other charters where the clients are paying you know, for everything on the boat. So the preference oh. sheets are very important. And they're very specific. So once we get those, as you know, once we get the preference sheets, I send those to the boat and we typically schedule a phone call with the client and with us to discuss, you know, itinerary and food and the chef will get on the call. So it's very specific and, you know, we're involved in every aspect of this until the client finishes the charter and gets back home and gives us their feedback. And we take care of the gratuity, which is additional on top of the rest of the fees as well. Right. So speaking of gratuities, how yes. much is the gratuity? Like what percentage? Would so they gratuity is, is usual and customary, but it's at the complete discretion of the charterer, um, anywhere from 10 to 20%. So 10 to 20% of what? The grand Of the charter fee. Of, no, just the charter that, fee. Just the charter um, fee. For the catamarans, I have a client who pointed out that he does not want to pay the gratuity on the entire fee because some of that is for the food and it's a good point. So I had him base the gratuity on 80% of the cost because that's how we factor in the provisioning for that is probably 20%. Um, but something important to point out regarding the gratuity for, because a lot of people watch below deck. Yeah, I'm one of them. Yes. Bravo. So, And I've, yeah, I've had a couple of my clients on there too. <laughs> have you really but anyway yes um and i know a lot of those kids because i'm here in fort lauderdale and a lot of them are here too but anyway um contrary to below deck and because as you know you're not supposed to travel with an, a large amount of cash we typically do all the gratuities by wire and that's not something that the client has to worry about so sometimes i'll have clients that send me the gratuity along with the rest of the payment and they say just hold on to this so I don't have to deal with it. And when the charter's over, they will tell me you can go ahead and release the gratuity. Um, I've never had someone not release it, but but it's again, it's nice you can prepay it. Or after the trip, if there's leftover provisioning money, you can apply that towards the gratuity. And then the client may have may wire me extra money to kind of make the gratuity whole, if you will. So, and that was what I was going to lead into in terms of gratuity. Yes. So they would not bring cash because you can't travel around the world with, and cross international borders with a large sum of cash yes, like that. more than $10,000. So yes. They would wire it, wire it to the broker. You can yes. hold on to it. And when you would release it after the cruise is over or do yeah, when the Well, actually what we do is so, so the captain will also, if when this is not an inclusive chart, all inclusive charter, the captain will keep an accounting report. And so he will, you know, he will reconcile that with the charter at the end of the, the charter. They'll sit down and discuss it. He will provide the receipts and all the expenses. And then he'll have a bottom line as to what was left over. Um, it, there's usually leftover. Sometimes, depending on what they're purchasing, there might be, they might have to send a wire, you know, because they went over the APA. But it just depends on what the bottom line is. And then typically the client will leave whatever is left over towards the, the gratuity and then wire the rest of it to me. And then we wire that directly to the boat. After the, the sale is over, after the yacht charter is over, usually you wire yes. it. Okay. Yes. So in, let's talk, I want to circle back to the provision, provisions. Um, if somebody wanted lobster every night, something or caviar or something unusually expensive they would charge a surcharge or the prov provisioning fee is based on what chicken steak like well no provisioning is based on whatever the client puts on their provisioning sheet 
Okay. So whatever had, they say they want, that's whatever what they post. want. They put it very, and the sheets are very specific. So you have room to put every single thing. Um, I've had clients that sometimes bring their own. I have a lot of clients that fly private. So I have clients that will either ship wine ahead or they'll bring their own wine from their own wine cellar. Um, I had a big charter in St. Bart's a few weeks ago and they brought a lot of their own just different specialty things. Right. Again, it depends on what your budget is. And then this crew had to fly in provisions from Europe and that's what they wanted. So again, it just depends. It, and all of these chefs on the catamarans, on the motor yachts, they're all really good trained chefs. So I think people are sometimes, you know, surprised even on, well, our, our, our client, our client A, who just finished his charter, you know, he had a fabulous chef on board and that yeah. boat's reasonably priced. So, oh my God. Yeah. And I even <laughs> called you, I saw his Facebook uh, photos and I'm like, oh my God, this is like a Michelin star restaurant. This F and B, the food and beverage was out of this world. And I wasn't even there eating it. I just saw the photos and I was impressed. And he had a catamaran. He didn't even have a motor yacht. And I'm like, wow. No. This is and also um, the quality of the beverage list for the all-inclusive is really good. I have some people sometimes think, oh, well, I'll probably want to, you know, send additional money to buy special things, but they have really nice, really great cocktails and wines and spirits and things like that. So typically, you know, people are really pleasantly surprised. I think client A was pleasantly surprised about that as well. Yeah, I got really positive reviews when he got back. And um, I showed pictures to one of my friends who works for the British Virgin Island Tour Sports. And I showed her the photos, the f and -Bs, And she's like, I wonder what chef did he get? And I'm like, well, here's a picture of this. I know him. I went to high school with him. It's such a small world in the travel industry. Everybody knows everybody. But if you're not in the travel industry, you know nobody. But when you're inside of it, everybody knows everybody. Yeah, so yeah. It's especially just, down in that BBIs as well and the US Virgin Islands, because it's the same. Yeah, there's it's a culture and it's a lot of younger, I want to say kids in their early 20s, but um you get a little bit of everything there too. But they all know each other as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Stacy, this has been really informative. I really appreciate you joining us today and educating us on yacht chartering. And if anyone is interested in chartering a yacht, whether it be for a retirement or a singles group or a destination wedding or a multi-gen Thanksgiving trip. Yes. Please, yeah, right. Thanksgiving trip. So reach out to me. I'm Teresa from Honeymoon Islands, and I'll put my contact information below the YouTube um channel but um i appreciate you joining and hopefully um somebody will be inspired by uh this webinar and i hope it educated and inspired somebody to get out of their comfort zone and expand your horizons and do something different so and Teresa, i want to thank you so much for having me and and to let your audience know it's just, I thoroughly enjoy working with you. It's been a really wonderful working relationship so far. So I look forward to our next yacht charter together. I do too. Well, thank you, Stacy. Thank you I'll so be much. In touch. Thank you. you. Too. Okay. Bye, Thanks. Everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.